When I was a 17-year-old schoolgirl, a new feminist organization changed my life. It was early days after independence when Zimbabwe police rounded up any women and girls found walking on urban streets. All were accused of soliciting as prostitutes. They had to pay admission of guilt fines or be locked up. I was angry and bewildered. Two years before independence, I had endured rape twice at the age of 12 by men in guns. One from the Rhodesian army that said they were protecting us from the terrorists, and one from the freedom fighters that said they were fighting to get us liberated from colonial oppression. Many other young girls and women survived the same trauma during the struggle and I believed independence had brought to an end any violation of women ever again. My own cousin and close friend, then 15, was one of those arrested in the roundup. She had just closed a mother's shop and was heading home. My spirit sank with the unfairness of it all. Then I heard on the radio about the Women's Action Group work. Angry women formed the group in response to this outrageous roundup. As a schoolgirl, I signed up for the newsletter Speak Out Taurai Kolomani. And as soon as I started working, I joined. After years in the disability movement, my life changed profoundly once more as I tested HIV positive and with time I became an AIDS activist. This year, 2008, WAG commemorates 25 years of its existence. As I celebrate with them, I realize that I yearn for what WAG meant to me as a young woman then. We need that vibrancy right now. My hope is that all our feminist organizations can support the next generation embracing women openly living with HIV.